practice tonight. What are you doing? Pretend I'm singing in the microphone. No, I gotta go. Can I come with you? Where are you gonna go to? I gotta go to Dixon, buddy. I need to come to Dixon with you. Maybe you come with next time, okay? Can I have a smooch? Where are you going? <laughs> Okay, love you boys, bye. You're using that microphone and you're using my microphone. You, go paint Liam. You, you want me to spank Liam? Yeah, I'm not gonna spank Liam, bye, love you. Yeah. Love you guys. Okay. See ya. Okay. We're gonna play See a band back. with Middle Todd. I'm gonna play in the band with Mr. Todd, yep. Yes. Middle Where's Finn's Todd. microphone? Can you give it to him, please? So he's not screaming when I walk out the door. Thank you. Love you guys, see you soon. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, love you. Are you gonna shut me out? Let me check. Oh, hang on. I got my. Yeah, you can have a hug. More hugs. Okay, love you. See you. See you. See you. Yeah, it did it funny like a boulder. Okay. I'll be home in the morning. What am I forgetting? I gotta clean up some mess. <laughs> I feel like I'm forgetting stuff. I don't like to feel like I'm forgetting things. Bye guys. See you tomorrow morning. We are headed out to Dixon. It is Monday night. It's 5.30, that means I should be there at about 6.45. As most of you know, the whole uh, coronavirus thing pretty much shut everything down. And I'm not complaining because a lot of people have had a lot of bad things happen to them from sickness, to job loss, you know, everybody's kind of struggling. And in the midst of that, everything that we had planned for this year kind of got shut down. What we do when we go into these prisons, when we go places, we, we scatter seed. We try to deliver hope to those that are hopeless. We try to talk to people about making positive changes and coming out the other side of things a little bit better. We're no different in that. You know, it does just as much for us as hopefully it does for the men when we go into these places and then we also do festivals and things like that but all of that has been shut down for the year as far as the schedule is concerned things are done we're going to get together tonight and practice but we're also going to talk about what are some of the things that we can do and i don't know what those things are but hopefully after a little chit chat we can figure those things out I'll have the mid quarantine, maybe a mid COVID. Questionable. And I'm the last one here. Sorry, dudes. The way that set up is. What's up? It's time for the rap show. Is it? So we're talking about. Uh, world events at the moment. We're gonna revelate! We're gonna revelate! Sir <laughs> Patrick Stewart, the doctor of rhythm. Gretsch drums extraordinaire. Yes. Hello, Facebook people! There you go. Usually he's just beating. We're doing some Facebooking. Because what else are we gonna do? We can't just do the same thing every Monday. We all on lockdown, y'all. We on lockdown. <laughs> What's next? Solitary confinement? We on lockdown. That was a little bit off color. Time. I think the big question is, what do we, what do we do? Are you seriously considering doing another album, another project? Yeah. Like, where are you at on stuff? Well, I've got every bit as much as I've had before any album. Tons of riffs. <clears throat> Tons of fragmented things. The deal is, I was all set the other day, Saturday. I was, because it was rainy, kind of. I was gonna go in the studio and start recording one that I got. 
But my problem is, like it is with everything right now, you know, and I'm just honest, I'm even honest with people when I'm talking, you know, whether I was talking to Glenn or, you know, talking to people on social media or whatever, we witness to people that are at the bottom of the barrel in, in, in terms of where they've arrived in life. They're completely <clears throat> devastated. They've, had, they've been stripped of all civil rights, liberties, pretty much for the most part. You know, being incarcerated is, is it's not a Sunday picnic. To reach those people, I mean, you've seen it firsthand. You can't, you can't beat around the bush. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta tell them like it is. Yep. And that's been a real liberating thing for me because I've never been real good at, I've, I've never been real good at biting my tongue anyway. So it's my brand of gospel. It's my brand of telling the story is to just tell people straight. My problem is, it, what it's been with everything that's going on, whether it's live broadcast, making videos and putting them out there, uh, giving a little short message on a video, whatever. I feel like, one, you feel like, is that it? Is that what we're down to? Are yeah. we waving a white flag here? Are we, or are we just being responsible or what's the deal, you know? And it's like, you know, we were talking about, I tuned down a half step and then yeah. drop D half yeah. step. Yeah. You said you had yourself worked up yeah. to where you were gonna do it and then you ended up not doing it yet? No, I didn't do it. I still have every intention, because I, I don't know what else to do. Sure. You know, because I've had, dude, I haven't even talked to you about it. I've had tons of people asking, when are we going to do a concert live? And I get that, and I'm not ridiculing anybody that's doing it. I'm not ready to go there. Why? What are you doing? And honestly, for tonight, practice and I and I hate saying this to you because you make such a sacrifice to come out here I got even more now you know the rest of the world is on lockdown hit out and here we here you are cruising the roads to get here and stuff and it's like and I'm and I'm sitting here going moping around going why we're not gonna have one show we're not gonna have one opportunity all of these things are opportunities to minister whether we're on a in a prison or on a festival stage, you know, we have tooled up and set up so much for the physical, in the presence of people, the literal manifestation of the gospel of Jesus Christ, as I think he would have done it or did do it in the sense that, I mean, he didn't roam around with guitars and 25,000 watt sound system, but it was a hands-on approach. When he healed a blind man and he, and he picked up some dirt and he spit in his hands and he put, put that in his eyes, did he need to do that because there was some healing property in the dirt. He's the great I am, really, right? So, I mean, he's Yeshua. He's, he's, he can move mountains. No, he, he did that because it bore witness. It was a tangible thing, as opposed to just doing, you know, the I, he, he could have done I dream a genie or nothing. And the guy would have, could have, you know, I see. Or he could have just went like this. Well, tell me what you see. Yeah. And now you see, right? I see, I see, into it. Everybody, thank you. I'm here all week. Uh, we're gonna do healings uh, Wednesday night. Uh, we may spill over into Thursday. Tell all your blind friends. Come yeah. on down. Get them all down here. <laughs> we're making crazy healings down here. For us, we've worked so hard at going out and loving on people. Think about all the stories down through the, over way over a decade, like like you. You guys, when we go out to eat afterwards, and you and Sherry, or did you see this person that was in there? And you know, I went over and I talked to him at this at this ministry house we were in, and found out you know that they lost their husband. Yeah. Uh, they've had cancer, or they you know they're they're homeless. Doing the right thing, man. Physically. Being the physical representation of Christ, it might be the only time those people are going to receive that. That's the thing, see, when people talk about what's essential right now and what, what's not essential. The, I, I'm not ridiculing the churches. I understand why they did. And you even said it. It's like, in the beginning of this whole thing, let's give the leadership, the government, all the choice, right? Right. It was, it was fear, but it was also compassion. Right. There were these astronomical numbers where it was like, no person with a heart is going to be like, well, if two million people are going to die, I'm still going to go do my thing. Absolutely. But it's not that. Now it's just now it's just a hundred percent fear. Now we've moved past that. Right. And it's and it's like everybody that's got two brain cells to rub together is going, what? Right. You mean the kids aren't going back to school in the fall? How are we even predicting that? How are we All predicting that things? at the end of April? That makes 
me begin to wonder if this isn't a bigger battle, a spiritual battle. Like I said, we have worked so hard at going out there and going to places that a lot of people don't want to go. Sherry and I have exhausted everything because we felt this calling that, that we were being told this is specifically what to do. And some people say, well, that's craziness. Well, okay, color me crazy. But you either believe in this or you don't. And it is essential, and it is a matter of actual life and death as we see it. We're talking about people's life and death. So I don't want to phone this in. Hey, everybody, this is the new normal. I, you know, and like I said, it sounds like I'm ridiculing all those that have gone that direction. No, I get it. I get it. I understand it. And, and we participate a little bit in it. I get it. Maybe what we're doing right now, this could reach somebody. And I get all of that. But it should just be a supplement. I believe that. It should just be a supplement. It, it should not be the new normal. Yeah. We should fight that all the way down. And I don't want to make anybody else sick. And I don't want to infect anybody. But I think there's ways to go about this. Sure. There has to be. There has to be, because what, you're just going to indefinitely <clears throat> no. wait? People, aren't, people will not survive that. No. You're already seeing that. I already know of one suicide. You and I will talk later about that, but, but this situation certainly couldn't have helped it. Yeah. And, I, and that's just one of, I, it's got to be happening. You know, you know, there's a lot of people on the earth. There's a lot of people scared. There's a lot of people that feel no hope. There's a lot of, yeah. which is the very reason. Why we need to mount up and get back out, and we need to be able to do these things. There's a lot of people scared. There's a lot of people that feel no hope. I, I'm not playing this game of, well, you know, Almighty God, you know, if you get the sin out of your life, and you, you know, and He'll He'll protect us. No, I mean, you know, plenty of missionaries went into third world countries, you know, a hundred years or even more ago. Uh, the Catholic Church was sending people everywhere on the face of the earth. And these people had the best of intentions on behalf of Jesus. And they were going into these places and they would get sick and their family, they'd take their families with them and their families would get sick and kids would die. And all. So to be honest with you, if you really examine our faith, we are basically called to be martyrs. That's like a dirty word now, right? But, I mean, that's basically what we're, you know, it comes down to life and death. So do you want to get on with the living and be honorable to a call? Or is it about longevity where we're just going to sit and be like, well, but, you know, if I'm here for a long time, I can do more good than if I'm burnt out quick. Everybody's at different places with that, you know. Yeah. And like I said, I don't want it to come off like I'm condemning anybody for doing it, because I don't have the answers. All I know is that when push comes to shove and I, and, I, and I break to myself and I get down before him in humility, he's not telling me to stop going places. He's not telling me to not get the message out. Now, people like to do just like they like to do a scripture. Yeah, but that, that doesn't mean actually that you have to physically. It means that, you know, I mean, you're, you could be doing it through this new normal through, hey, everybody, this is the new normal. Videos and broadca live broadcasts. And, yeah, sure, you can. But I'm not going to split hairs and I'm not going to split scripture and I'm not going to split and I'm not going to split the calling. The calling was, and I don't believe he steered us wrong. We've seen it. You and I have seen it. We experienced it firsthand, oddly enough, right, at a fever pitch towards the end of last year. Yep. Some very big Holy Spirit moments. I guess we, we have our answer what was really going on. There was a war, there's a warfare going on. When you're walking on the right path and you're doing the things, you're answering that call, get, get prayed up. How many times have I urged that over and over again? Get your own relationship with God right because the devil is going to be coming at you yeah. and your families. This isn't just being in a band. That's like the least thing we do. And like I said, I don't want it to come off like I'm condemning anybody for doing it, because I don't have the answers. All I know is that when push comes to shove and I, and, I, and I break to myself and I get down before him in humility, he's not telling me to stop going places. He's not telling me to not get the message out. If we do start recording stuff, do you want to tape it? Sure. Let people into the, yeah. into the world a little I bit? I think so. I think that would be cool. I think so. I mean, you know, I hesitated for a second because it's like, won't they just all be bored with that? But I, you know, I don't know. This is the this is the twentieth year. I still refer to it as the new studio. This was born out of 
This was born out of tragedy all around me. I was losing the matriarch of our family, my, my best friend on the face of the earth, my grandmother, and uh, she was dying of cancer. Every day, it, my mother was racing down there. My mom would have been about my age at the time. She'd put the phone up next to her, she'd want to talk to me. And she was literally, this is like right up till the day before she died. And she would constantly ask me if the contractors, it was in the fall. And she literally would say to me on the phone, in this broken up, dying voice, honey, are they building it? Referring to the studio. And I was, I would just, I can just remember being like, yeah, grandma, they're building it. They are building it. And she'd say, good, good. I can still hear, I can feel it. Hmm. This is my tabernacle. This is my cathedral. This is my sanctuary. And so people on social media, they most often see me in this place because if we're not out on the road, if I'm not on the motorcycle now with Sherry or whatever, I mean, I'm here, I'm here. There's a comfort in here. I hear her voice. I hear all the music that you and all and the current members and all the past members and everybody that's ever made music in here, even clients of mine. I hear it as a living organic thing, resonant in the wood, acoustic panels. And I hear my grandmother saying, good, good, honey. And every time we do a show, and we come back here and we unload. In the beginning, I used to feel like I'm too old for this and I would be devastated. And you know how the trips were so taxing and, and every, you know, whether it was hot out or whether, all the heavy lifting and everything. I think, how can I possibly think I can do this as a man over 40 years of age? Well, here I am 56 headed towards 57 and I, as God is my witness, I don't want to quit can't quit this we come back here now and we unload and it's complete chaos and the stuff you know you know what I do I start repairing everything I go through everything but it's joyous I I like praise praise God the whole time I'm in here hurt physically worn out and I'm cleaning everything and fixing everything and soldering broken wires and I'm and I'm praising them with music cranked and I'm saying I can't wait till we get back out there and we do this again. I'm grateful for that spirit change in me. And, and part of that formula has been having people like you, dude. I mean, that's, that's the honest to God's truth. Having people like you, AJ, not just be in the band, but become my little brother, my son, whatever it is. My family your family become my family. That's why I feel it's a physical thing that we are supposed to go out there and reclaim all these lost family members. Because, I'm gonna start bawling now, as I tell these men, and you've heard it over and over again in these prisons, you're somebody, you're not from some alien planet, you're somebody's son, you're somebody's brother, you're somebody's dad, somebody's uncle, you are a child of God and we're here to start today, not when you get paroled, but to start today. Everybody wants to know what you're doing when you get out, what's your plan. I want to know what your plan is right now, man, when you get out of this gymnasium today, moving forward, I want you to know that we love you and we're going to scratch and claw to get back here and continue to love on you. But you are part of a family. You are a child of the almighty risen Savior, Jesus, and we're here to reclaim you. While others cast you out, while others pass judgment on you, while others swing a gavel, while others do whatever they do, they stick you in, in isolation, they do whatever it is, I'm here to open the gates and tell you it starts today. Your redemption, your reclaiming your status in the family starts today. And so I know it's a physical thing because just as we have become family and just as all of the other guys and, and our current guys, Gage and, 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 and Patrick, who aren't just our current guys, they're ours, man. We is stuck with them whether we want to be or not. <laughs> and we want to be, right? Yeah, we do. We got we to gotta go out there and do it. Whoa! Oh my God, it's Mary! What's up? Hi! Hi! This is about to Oh, jeez! Hey, 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 hey. Okay, Jerry. Now that we got everything.
Here, here. Where's your collar? He doesn't. What are you giving him? Oh, we got marshmallows. <laughs> marshmallows. I, Hi. Yeah. I'm excited to see you too. You're a big beast. Where are you going? <laughs> talk about Finn. It's more. It's more interesting than what I'm talking about. What did you guys talk about? Pooping. Body training? <laughs> no, 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 no. That's big stuff, man. Uh, that was a big deal. We talked about zombies. Zombies? Yeah, he's really into zombies now. We talked about the cookies he made with mommy. These kids really need to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about a lot because he was just kept up going and going and going. Good. It's crazy. Crazy. It's miss so him. funny. Yeah. Yeah, you guys got to ride out and see him soon. We miss him. I know. They miss you guys too. I thought maybe Saturday. They were, I got actually I got footage on here from tonight before I left and, and Finn is like, I wanna go with I need to come to this with you. Let me see if I can find it. Hold up. I'm gonna stop this. Yeah. I'll be right back. Sometimes people ask me why I still play with Todd. Sometimes people ask me why we do what we do. And we can't show you guys ever because we go into prisons. But that, what you just saw, that's the real deal. None of that was scripted. None of that's contrived. None of that is, is that's it. That's it. And that's every, every practice that we have an hour or two after we're done, that's me and him sitting in here talking about that. It does a lot for me, and I hope it does a lot for him. I know it does. I know it does a lot for everybody that's involved with it in one way or another. But that's what it's all about, and that's why I still do it. That's why I still serve with a smile on my face, and that's why I still go out and try to minister to people, even though I'm no minister, I'm no pastor, I'm no preacher, I'm no prophet, but it does a lot for me, and I hope that it does a lot for them. But that's why I do it, and that's the real deal. That's the real deal, kids. That's the real deal. Family. <laughs>